A very good morning to all of you. I, my name is Andrea Amon. I'm the director of ECDC, and I would like to welcome you. The um, it's Eskide 2019 is back here in Stockholm after a very successful event last year in Malta. And uh, some changes have occurred um, since the last Eskide in Stockholm. Both Eskide and ECDC changed the uh, premises and the locations. So we moved in our new building last year and Eskide changed from the waterfront um, uh, conference center to here the München Brüggeriet. And since I was um, born very close to München, to Munich, and have studied medicine and public health there, it rings a nice bell for me. One aim of Eskide is uh, strengthening and expanding the human network uh, of um, uh, professionals that work in this field, both in Europe and globally. And look how well this uh, uh, is, is happening. We have for this year registered, uh, I mean, this was uh, yesterday, 609 participants from 46 countries. 26 of them are EU countries, several more from, um, from uh, the wider European region, and the rest comes from all over the world. So I really would like to welcome everybody who had double-digit hour travels, as well as those that had double-digit minute travels from Stockholm. Um, as every year, the uh, abstracts that are submitted to, uh, to the conference are the backbone. And uh, we had almost 500 submitted abstracts. Um, not everybody uh, got accepted, and nonetheless, people submitted their abstracts and made a commitment for, for Eskide. And I would really like uh, to, to uh, uh, appreciate this and uh, 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 praise them for this. Unfortunately, we could uh, accept less than half, and that has mostly to do with the capacity uh, of the conference and not necessarily with the quality of the, of the event. So we have, uh, will have 140 poster presentations and uh, 82 um, uh, uh, oral presentations. Now, the, uh, another aim of ESCAIDE is to discuss and debate public health challenges and scientific advances. And uh, when I was looking at the uh, professions uh, of the invited speaker, and I'm sure uh, if I had had the opportunity to look at the professions of, the, of all the speakers, uh, it would have been the same. I noticed a really wide um, a variety of disciplines. And that reflects the necessity of infectious disease epidemiology to work with others, with other disciplines. And uh, I think we all have examples where we are well, made painfully aware that our wonderful evidence-based data don't do the trick. So we need other skills uh, uh, and competences in order to really transfer the knowledge that we create to um, uh, the where, where it actually is, uh, should be used. And um, these reflections on uh, other skills and competences that we either might want to uh, develop ourselves or at least uh, we need to know in order to collaborate, these reflections on, uh, have to go when we now start reflecting on um, uh, training curricula, when we start uh, reflecting on our networks that we need and the collaborations. The program for these plenaries has been planned and decided long before the political priorities of the new commission have been uh, the, um, uh, known. What I see though is that several of our plenaries pick up uh, uh, priorities that are actually pinned down in the mission letter of the new commissioner, Stella Kyriakides from Cyprus. And I think this is, um, uh, I mean, just as using examples, health security, vaccination confidence, uh, climate change. Uh, so I think this is a very good sign that public health and political priorities coincide. 
Of course, we have also uh, uh, other events than the conference uh, 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 program proper. So we have, uh, as every year, Euro Surveillance. That uh, lunch seminar will take place this lunchtime so for the eighth time, and it is about point of care tests. Another of the scientific advances that uh, probably um, will or has already started changing the way how we deal with, um, uh, with uh, data. So you're all invited if you get still a, a space. Uh, then there you definitely will have a space today uh, in the evening in the in the reception. It will be a very long day because there's another plenary tonight or uh, in the late in the afternoon. So please stay and uh, um, use the opportunity to meet all of uh, uh, to meet each other and uh, talk about what has happened during the day. Um, uh, tomorrow there will be a bar, uh, bar camp uh, that is now a fixed point in our agenda after sort of um, uh, being uh, introduced a few years ago, but it's so successful and it's so successful <coughs> because all of you contribute. So this will only, uh, uh, this will be something that you shape yourself and uh, the success is yours alone. And then uh, on the third day is also something that we started uh, um, a few years ago, a career compass where really career options can be um, uh, discussed. So now that is uh, the social media where you can, uh, that you can use, uh, use the hashtag Eskaide uh, when you uh, are um, communicating about the conference. And I would really wish you um, a, a enjoyable conference, very new um, um, uh, things that you learn, uh, new friends that you meet, and I hope uh, that I can uh, talk to you, um, to each of you, uh, as much as possible during the three days. I will be here today the whole day, and in the coming days uh, a bit less so, but I hope I can meet you all. Thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce Mike Catchpole. He is the chief scientist of ECDC and the chair of the scientific committee of ESCAIDE. And he will introduce our keynote speaker. Please, Mike. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Andrea. A uh, big welcome from me, too. Um, before uh, we move on to the first plenary session, uh, I have a few things uh, to say. Um, so just, just to remind you, of, as Andrea said, of uh, the aims of this conference. Um, um, while you're looking at this, can I just say that um, I will be mentioning the app, the fantastic app for the conference. Uh, the conference is not complete, for, uh, not a complete experience if we don't have the app. So I will be asking you to make use of the app in a couple of minutes' time. So if you haven't downloaded the app, uh, then please could you do that? You need to go to... Um, now, I need to remind myself of the... Well, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, it's... Uh, I just can't remember. It's, it's, it's things go out of your mind. You stand here, you have the lights, and things go out of your mind. But there's a, there's a slide that tells you how to do it. But anyway, just to remind you, as Andrea said, uh, the aims are sharing scientific knowledge. This is a scientific conference. And experience. And I think that's one of the one of the things I always enjoy most is, the, is really the sharing of experience, both through the presentations and talking with colleagues. Discussing and debating scientific advances, strengthening and expanding our networks, and providing opportunities for further development. And I hope that we will achieve this, and I hope at the end of the conference you will feel that that's been achieved for you too. Now, as chair of the scientific committee, I would like to extend a huge, a huge uh, vote of gratitude for my fellow members of the scientific committee, uh, who you can see here. Many of them uh, you will see in the room or in the conference over the next three days. Um, uh, they really uh, worked hard in developing the program, particularly organizing the plenary sessions, contacting speakers, uh, and make a huge contribution every year to this. So I'm just really grateful for all the efforts that they've put in. And the reviewers. Andrea mentioned that we had nearly 500 abstracts this year. Each abstract is reviewed by at least three experts. 
which meant that actually there were over 1,400 reviews performed in order to get us to where we are now. And so this is just to say thank you to the 210 reviewers who made this happen. And if there's anybody in the audience that wasn't a reviewer this year but would like to be one next year, then please come and find me during the next three days to let me know. Um, I will say yes. <laughs> now, the app. The app. Um, you can find it uh, the App Store or Google Play, depending on what form of technology you have. Um, and if you search for app, app in Conf and Conference and Events, and then within that, uh, where it prompts you to put in a code, put in Iskida 2019. Um, and the app has everything you need to know. I, those of you who were last year, I, I, as I said, I think it, it's better than Snapface or Chatbook or all those other things that I don't really understand. Um, uh, and uh, last year, I thought it couldn't be better. But in fact, this year, it is better. Uh, because this year, we've added, uh, we, our, our, uh, th we've had functionality added, which allows you to ask the moderator. So you can use the app to type in live questions uh, during, to, during sessions to moderators, which will facilitate the, uh, the discussions after presentations. And that's available for all plenary and parallel sessions. And audience voting, where you can actually select from options presented in sessions to give live, live feedback. So we are trying to make some of the sessions more interactive. And what I'd like to do now is test that out. So those of you who have the app live can do this. Those who haven't got there, get, get on with it. Um, so the question is, why did you decide to join Iskida this year? Um, and there are a set of answers that you can select from. So, to improve my knowledge on issues facing infectious disease prevention and control. To gain insight on pathways of intervention to apply in my working practice. To fulfill my educational goals and training needs. To establish meaningful connections and expand my network for contact. You can see how this matches seamlessly with the aims of the, of the conference. Um, I have a topic for bar camp on Thursday to see my friends. Um, Skyder 2018 seems so far away, as does the sunshine from the Skyder 2018, it has to be said. The weather, I've heard Stockholm is beautiful in November. <laughs> Just look out the window. And I still don't know why I'm here. So, um, you are allowed, and this is the only time in the conference you're allowed to do this, you're allowed to look at your mobile phone during the next couple of slides while I'm talking so that you can register your vote. And we'll come back to the, the results after I've said a few more words. So um, <coughs> education is one of the aims of uh, this conference. And we have, got, uh, we have been registered as CME accredited. Uh, you can get up to 18 credits uh, for uh, attending the full conference. Um, but please note, anyone wishing to claim CME requirements, we do ask, insist, uh, that you complete a conference feedback questionnaire um, uh, before we will issue the CME uh, certificate. Uh, and you can contact us at Iskida Conference, ecdc.europa.eu. The feedback, I have to say, we really do use. Uh, the scientific committee and the members will, if you talk to any of the scientific committee members, we have quite a long discussion about the feedback we got and try to make sure that the conference program for the next year reflects that feedback as far as is possible. Um, as ever, uh, our, our friends in the uh, EPIET alumni network uh, are sponsoring uh, awards for best oral and poster presentations. Uh, and there was the 2019 audience vote for the poster award. Please use the Eskida app uh, for that. Uh, also, again, there will be a, a photographic uh, competition. Uh, there are voting slips in your delegate pack for that. So that's an analog voting system rather than digital. Um, and please, uh, submit your vote, and I'm sure there were boxes somewhere for that, uh, by 3 o'clock on Friday the 29th. And uh, on Friday...
Friday the 29th. Uh, at, at the end of the conference, uh, we will be um, giving you a show of the Skyder in pictures. Um, this is just uh, the, the usual uh, safety note then. Please can I ask that everybody wears wear your badges at all times. Uh, that's really important to us and for the security staff here who are here to, for your well-being. Um, uh, it's, it's quite a labyrinth, this building. Um, uh, so this map uh, gives some clues, gives some clues as to where the emergency exits. Yeah, um, uh, I, I suggest that you wander around, you look for the green signs. Um, uh, but there are a number of emergency exits should the need arise. So, as I mentioned before, it's really important that we give us you give us our f you give us your feedback to let us know what you liked and what we can do better. Uh, we're using the EU survey tool for this. Uh, it's open uh, from the 29th of November to the 13th of December, so you don't have to do it while you're here. Obviously, it's uh, probably easier if, if you can, and it's mandatory for those requesting CME credits. Just the other thing to, to mention, please, um, during the poster sessions, the moderate because these are moderated poster sessions, and we have tried to space the posters out as much as we can, but even so, it's really important that please um, to keep the noise levels down so that people can hear the presentations being made. So if there is a topic that you have a burning desire to discuss with a colleague, uh, if you could please find somewhere that the posters aren't being held at the time, that would be really, really appreciated. So, I think, I think the next slide is the results slide. So, mind you, these were the questions, and I'm just looking up to the top. Do I press the button now to get the results? No, you do. So, um, hey, so as <laughs> here you see the votes. Um, most people came here uh, for the knowledge and professional development related reasons. I see that there are <laughs> there's at least 10 people still don't know why they're here. <laughs> and 11 you were, of you were completely misled about the weather in Stockholm in November. But there you go. Um, so it works. Uh, and please, those of you who haven't downloaded the app yet, please do because we will be making use of this in other sessions in the conference. Um, so that, uh, I think, was all I needed to say. Um, so we will now move on to the first plenary session. Um, so despite... Uh, claims 50 or more years ago, I think it was, that the, uh, the war against infectious diseases uh, had been won. Infectious disease outbreaks um, and epidemics continued to exact an enormous toll in terms of human suffering, economic costs, and the public fear that they engender. Um, we have, every year, we have new tools, new diagnostics, new vaccines, new interventions uh, that can provide us with opportunities for improved response. Um, but simply having those tools is not enough. We need to know how and when to use them. We need to, and learning from past experience is absolutely key to learning how we can do better in the future. Um, and particularly drawing from the results of uh, studies uh, and the knowledge and experience that's gained in the field. And the challenge is to how to make sure that those lessons and those new tools are translated into more effective response in the future. And we are incredibly fortunate, and I have to say incredibly fortunate, uh, to have with us um, uh, this morning, um, well, for me, the field epidemiologist who's probably got the greatest hands-on experience of dealing with infectious disease emergencies of a global scale in the world today. Um, we are really fortunate that we have uh, Mike Ryan uh, with us. Um, the calls on his time are enormous. Um, he almost couldn't make it, but he made a special effort to be here, and I know he has to fly out straight after this meeting uh, to deal with an ongoing crisis. Um, but Mike, uh, I've known Mike for many, many years. Uh, Mike is currently the executive director for the WHO Health Emergencies Programme. Uh, but for, for me, he's Mr. Global Outbreak. Um, uh, 
Um, if you think of any, since his, he first started in WHO, I think it was back in 1996, if there's been any global infectious disease emergency, Mike has been there. And that's not a cause and effect thing. He, you know, he's been there to... <laughs> Um, he's been there to sort it out on our behalf. Um, uh, just a huge wealth of experience from SARS to Ebola to anything else you can think of. Uh, Mike's been there. Uh, Mike trained as a, a field epidemiologist. Um, uh, and that's when I first met Mike. It was back in Collindale in London in goodness knows when that was, but it's probably best not to say, uh, in the days of something that was called then CDSC, and will still be CDSC to those of us who work there. Um, and then, of course, the EPIET uh, Training Fellowship. So, Mike, um, it's my pleasure to welcome you up to the stage uh, to share with us your experience about health security, preparedness, lessons from Ebola, what are we learning now, uh, how are we going to apply it, what have we learned from the past. Mike Ryan.